Hello, Wesley Church. Tonight is the third night of Vacation Bible School. And I just have to say, God has richly been blessing this time. It's been a wonderful year thus far. We're excited about the continued evenings together with all the students. We know you've been praying for us. We certainly feel those prayers. Well, I'd like to briefly talk about three things in this post. First of all, I'd like to share a verse about the purpose of God's house. At least Jesus' words on the purpose of God's house. I'd like to then ask you as consumers, how do we best update you? How do we keep you informed? What do you like in terms of our communication? And then lastly, I want to share a little bit about my initial vision for our faith community. Let me start with Mark eleven seventeen, 17, just the first half of the verse. The verse says, And he, Jesus, began to teach and to say to them, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? Jesus comes to the temple and he finds that it's functioning more like a marketplace than a temple. He is more than grieved by what he finds. The temple is being misused. Today, I'm not as interested about understanding what is the nature of the misuse. I'm more under, interested in understanding what Jesus believes to be the proper use of God's house. Now, Jesus could have said of the temple, he could have said, you know, the temple is it's a place where God's or sacrifices are made to God. And he would have been accurate. He could have said, you know, this is a place where God's people meet with God. And that would have been accurate. That is the purpose of the temple. He could have said, this is a place where people bring the tithe into the storehouse. And that would have been accurate. All of them would have been far better than using the temple of God as a, as a marketplace. But Jesus chooses to teach one clear purpose for the temple, one primary reason for the use of the temple. Jesus quotes Isaiah and he says, speaking for God, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Wow, just let that sink in a minute. Jesus says that the proper function of God's house is to be a place of prayer for everybody, for all nations. Imagine if when people thought of our church or maybe people spoke about our church, the first thing they would say, the first thing they would think of is something like, well, you know, if nothing else, that church prays. They pray for everybody and they invite everybody to prayer. I mean, no matter how we want to interpret what Jesus is saying here, clearly he intends the church to be centered around prayer. How might we at Wesley keep pulling the church in the direction of prayer? If you think of something that might add to the, the, the nature of prayer, the culture of prayer at our church, please, please share that with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And then how might you yourself be adding to our prayer life as a church, as Wesley, the house of prayer? Please take some time and reflect on that. Now, I'd like to also ask you, as I mentioned, about our communication channels. Specifically, how do you like receiving content from the church? Is there a favorite way for you? Maybe it's a Facebook post. Maybe it's our email newsletter. Maybe it's a hard copy bulletin on Sunday. Or maybe there's another format. Feel free to leave your input as a comment to this video or send me an email. I'm hoping both to streamline our communication and to make it more convenient for you to be in contact with us as a church. Lastly, a question that is asked new pastors particularly is something like this. Pastor, what is your vision for the church? Now, let me qualify my answer a bit. I am way too new to understand the gifts that God has placed in each person here at Wesley. I'm beginning to gain that understanding, but I am not in a position to know what God might be working through us. I'm also not in a position to really have assessed the needs of our community or the places where God might be at work or calling us to be at work. So I am in no position to offer any full-fledged vision at this point. Furthermore, a vision for any organization 
should be a collective vision. It should boil up from the leaders and the people to some extent. It should be something everyone is bought into. That said, a reasonable leader has some idea of where things could be moving. And I do. You may have noticed a significant emphasis on prayer lately. Thursday mornings, we gather now for prayer, 10 a.m. in the sanctuary, pray aloud or pray silently. And then monthly healing prayer that we're offering after worship, there is an intentional increase in prayer. As I read and study scriptures, I'm convinced that, that everything in the life of faith must begin with and must be borne along on prayer. It won't be mere human effort or ideas that bring God's spirit into our midst in greater ways or bring about God's miracles in our midst. It will be God. So let's recognize that and just always be asking. You've heard me quote John Wesley before. He said, God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. I sincerely believe that the prayer is the power behind all the momentum that happens in the kingdom of God. I'm talking with leaders and trying to get a sense of what other people see as possibilities for prayer. We're talking about a prayer class. Also, possibly a prayer walk around the facility, something that I know you've done before. Stay tuned and then come along. Be part of each prayer initiative as you can be involved. Now, will there ever be a vision beyond that? I think so. It's likely that there will be a bigger vision as we continue, as, as God answers us in this prayer time, this time of making prayer our focus. I think that God will boil up from us where he's working and where he wants us to be working alongside of him. Well, thank you again for taking a little bit of time to tune into this post. Remember, this Sunday is Vacation Bible School Celebration. You won't want to miss that. I hope to see you Sunday. <music>